Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. As you can imagine, we've been in a bit of a newborn haze the past few weeks as we've been adjusting to being a family of five. The initial time after having a new baby is such an interesting transition for me. I feel really eager to get into some sort of routine of life, but I think that's mainly because everything is like so out of routine. There's an almost nostalgic kind of feeling that I get um, that I can only compare to the feeling of being homesick that I used to get when I was a kid. I would stay at other people's houses for like sleepovers and it would kind of make me really anxious, I guess, because I was outside of the comfort of my routine. And while I did outgrow this anxiety, I still feel that same feeling every once in a while, particularly after I've had a new baby. It was the most intense for me after having my first baby, which is why I think it made it such a difficult and overwhelming season for me. I tried really hard to push against that feeling and tried to create like some semblance of how my life used to be before I had kids. And if you've had any kids, you know that life drastically changes and you kind of need to learn how this new little gift now fits into your life. New rhythms, um, new routine, and what I've done differently with my second baby and I'm also working on now with my third is not forcing a routine at the beginning and just embracing the new ways this little person adds to my life, I'm not focusing on what they're taking away. And I think I was afraid that I was losing a part of myself and I just wasn't ready to let go. Okay, so it's about 7.30ish. Um, Haven is a little over a week old right now. Um, unfortunately, she's kind of following the pattern of Sayla when she was a baby. Just very like discontented. You can tell that she's her tummy's hurting her because she'll be completely fine and then she'll kind of scream out, have lots of gas, lots of hiccups. Um, and sometimes when babies come out of the womb, if there's just a lot of trauma, you know, they're... Um, hips can be out of place and I know there's issues with like pressure on their nerves from the spine so this time um, I've been doing a few things differently that I want to see if it makes any difference. Um, I did order some probiotics and a digestive enzyme for her that I'm trying and I also have the earthly tummy ease um, that I think I showed you guys in one of my nesting videos but um, I also want to try chiropractic work this time as well. So we have some friends in our church that are chiropractors and I messaged them last night just asking if they do infants and they do and he said to bring her in in the morning. So I'm going to go take her now um, and try it out. Unfortunately there's a lot of traffic but I will let you guys know how if I think it works and um, how it works for her because you know if you've had a colicky baby that it can just add to the stress you know like you're never able to put them down during the day thankfully even is pretty content at night she'll just nurse and go back to sleep but um, throughout the day she's very hard to settle especially as the day goes on so I will let you guys know how that goes <laughs> Haven oh no ah. okay so we just got our first adjustment and um they said that her uh, neck, she had a little bit of the, I don't know what you call it, torta, torta something, <laughs> where her neck is p constantly positioned to the one side and then one of her legs was, you know, measuring a little bit shorter on the one side. So yeah, I think people often think of chiropractic work as like cracking bones and stuff like that, but really it's just very gentle massaging and pushing and on her neck and her hips and um, we got our legs in alignment, so we'll uh, go back next week sometime. See how you do. We're full of milk. <laughs> Okay.
Okay, so I'm baby wearing today because a fussy little baby. I was explaining to you guys before that we were going to do some chiropractic work. And um, actually, after the first adjustment, it was pretty night and day, like how different. <laughs> how different she was. Like, yeah, just much more peaceful and sleeping good at night. Um, and then slowly as the week went on, she started becoming fussier again. And so we got another adjustment this week. And um, again, the next day was great, but now has slowly gotten a little bit fussier again. And you can just tell that something's off in her tummy. So um, thankfully she's sleeping great through the night. Um, not through the night, but <laughs> great uh, at night. But there's just a lot of prep going on around here. I wanna show you guys some of the things that we got at Ikea. We've just been kind of like making the house look a little bit more presentable for turning into an Airbnb, taking down all of our personal photos. So um, I've gathered some things and I'm gonna start packing them into boxes, but we've just been doing a ton of prep for getting visas, getting her birth certificate, getting passports and stuff that we need to. Um, so that's gonna be kind of a crunch point for getting her passport. Um, so we're probably going to try to expedite the process if we can, but just lots of prep work. I got Mo vaccinated yesterday, got his microchip, getting all those details down to take him over and really just working on the house right now at this point. But let me show you some of the things that we did in our bedroom that are fun. Okay, so I showed you guys in one of my other videos these new side tables that we got. We're actually going to be getting a king-size bed for in here, which is what one of the property managers recommended to us. But instead of doing like a big artwork piece here, I thought a shelf would be really cool with some plants. And I got these really cute like ceramic cactuses from Ikea. So I'm going to decorate this a little bit. And then we got these really awesome, unique lamps. Um, they're probably not the best for reading, but they make it look really cool. So we added those. So yeah, I'm gonna decorate this quickly. And again, we are just taking down our personal items to package up uh, because we really only have like two full months, which feels so soon. Uh, it's really crazy. We have, so we have the rest of March, we have April, and then we have all of May. The house that, I don't know if I've said, I think I might've said in a previous video, but we have found a house in, in the country that we're going to, which I haven't said yet where we're actually headed to. We have received an offer for a house there, which is so awesome because actually most of the places that people live in this city specifically, they live in apartment buildings. Um, it's just more common there. And we really, you know, that would have been fine, but we were really praying that the Lord would pro provide a house for us. And that way we could have some sort of yard for the girls to play in. So yeah, just such an answer to prayer. We're really excited about that. So this house won't be available until about the second week of June. So that's where we now have kind of like more of a tentative plan of like specifically when we're gonna be leaving. So lots to do in that time, um, but we're slowly chugging away at them. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of these books up on the shelf here um, and get that looking nice. We're cleaning the house up because we have some property managers coming to check our space out for when we leave to manage it and I think it's the first time I've seen it clean like fully clean in quite some time with three little kids and a newborn so it's very nice I think these feelings of homesickness can actually be a good thing. It's a reminder that this isn't our home and that we were made for heaven. And in the Lord's kindness, he's really shown me in this season of motherhood that my identity is secure in him and that he's using these little ones to transform me into his image more than if I didn't have them. So when I begin to feel these symptoms of homesickness or that my life is drastically changing again, I can rest secure in the truth that my life is hidden with Christ and God and that my identity and my security is ultimately found in him and not in my circumstances. I think the realization of this is what ultimately allowed me to 
to say yes to the idea of going overseas with three little kids. Just not seeking to always live a life of peace and comfort, but learning to say yes to God and to live in the adventure and just walking closely in relationship with him. I think this is when we'll see him do the most in us and through us because wherever he calls us is the best place that I can be. Any comfort or peace that I have in this world is only temporary um, and ultimately my home is in heaven. With Haven being a little bit more of a fussier baby, I'm feeling a little bit more tempted to, to think like, why wouldn't the Lord have given me a baby with an easier temperament before, you know, going overseas? And it would have made it so much easier, you know, to adjust there if our baby was content and easy. I was quickly reminded that God doesn't always want life to be easy for us. And He also doesn't make mistakes. He knows what He's doing in this and in us. And an easier life isn't always His desire for us, but a sanctified life. Just remembering that I can trust Him in this. Okay, so we're headed back to the chiropractor. I'm taking Haven today again. I wanted to wait a few times before I commented on, you know, whether it felt like the chiropractor was working for her being pretty colicky. And I would say that her colic definitely picked up in the last few weeks. But we've had about four chiropractor sessions now with her. And I will say that it has drastically improved her attitude and just how she's feeling and specifically like the first two days after she's adjusted she's a completely different baby very calm very like she'll just fall asleep in my arms she'll let me put her down in the car seat she doesn't really like her car seat a lot of the time when we're driving but even right now like we're driving to go get her adjusted and she's not crying which normally she is um, I think she's just usually uncomfortable I would say that that is a huge huge progress like very notably different she got adjusted two two days ago so normally I just get her adjusted once a week and I notice like the first two days she's really good and then she slowly starts becoming fussier again but we actually spent time hanging out with our chiropractor and his family this weekend just hanging out because they're friends from church so he adjusted her while we were there and she's been so pleasant the last two days so what a huge blessing if you're ever struggling just with a colicky baby I know there's lots of suggestions on things that you can do dietary wise and you know those things are definitely good to try but I would not hesitate to try chiropractic work as well there are a few other things that I'm doing I do a probiotic with her which I know a lot of other people have said that that is very helpful so I'm I am doing that and then just recently the last three or four days now I have cut dairy out completely as well because I want to see if maybe those you know a few days after when she starts getting fussy again if we can kind of mitigate those or minim minimize those a little bit as well by just doing some dietary things so yeah a few things if you're having a colicky baby because I know that can really wear on a mom and it kind of just changes your experience of having a newborn so I, I didn't do this with my first daughter and I really wish I would have now I think I would have had a very different outlook on motherhood <laughs> in that stage of being a new mom but what a blessing praise the Lord just great great friends that are helpful and some improvement Okay, so Haven just got her adjustment. So if you're in the Austin area, I highly suggest our chiropractor. He has a location in Austin, but also in Round Rock. It's called Focused on You Chiropractic, and you can ask for Gerard. Highly, highly, highly recommend, especially for your babies. I mean, think about it. They just came out of being in the womb and is a little bit traumatic, and they're, you know, kind of stuck in a position for a lot of the time. So, um, yeah, just don't rule it out. some progress through our checklist of things that need to be done before 
we head overseas, there's really not a whole lot of things that need to be completed still, besides like there's some rearranging that we need to do in the house. And then we're waiting on Haven's birth certificates. So we can get passports and visas for her. And then here in the next couple of weeks, we'll be purchasing flights. I hadn't mentioned where we're going yet, but we are actually headed to Kyrgyzstan, which is in Central Asia. And this is very specific, I know, and probably not a place that many people travel to. We are specifically moving to the city of Bishkek. And the reason why that we are headed here is my husband's dad has started a business that works with integrative farming techniques, specifically in using cow manure to produce biomethane gas to create fertilizer. That is a more sustainable way to support the agricultural space there. Kyrgyzstan has been very dependent on Russia in the past for their fertilizer. So this just allows for the country to have more access to more bioavailable regenerative types of fertilizer. And my husband has been working remotely with his dad on this project for the past few years now. And we're wanting to be more hands-on with it in this season of life. So that is one of the main reasons why we are moving there and what we'll be doing when we actually get there. Besides just focusing on integrating to the culture and the language and getting connected with people. And we're really grateful just to have my in-laws there. This is the first time that we're actually gonna be living near grandparents. They've actually been there for about 30 plus years now but my husband actually lived there as a kid for about 10 years as well. So he kind of already has some knowledge of the language and the culture. So we're really, really excited to see what the Lord is gonna do while we're there. And I know our girls are really excited. I don't think they really comprehend the magnitude of the move that we're doing. You know, we've moved a lot in the past with them, just being in the military. We've moved every two plus years now. So they're kind of used to moving. However, this is gonna be quite a different kind of move. Um, it's a very long flight to get us there. So some very exciting things coming. If you haven't subscribed already, I would highly suggest doing so so that you won't miss anything in the future as we're finishing preparing to move over there. And I will be filming our move process, filming flying there with kids and a newborn and a cat. Thankfully, my mother-in-law will be here, most likely be here in the States and will fly over with us. So we have some extra hands on board for that flight. And I'll just take you guys along on our journey as we move there so you can see what the culture is like what our house is gonna be like once we get there, just how it is integrating to a new culture that is very different than our own. So if you're interested in following our journey, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. So that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you guys on the next one.